Hey guys, Andrew and Nate here. And today we're gonna see if we can make an $85 guitar play like a $1,000 guitar. So I think I found us a really good option on Craigslist. I wanted to do it on Craigslist because you can get guitars for really cheap. And I've had a lot of luck with Craigslist, but you do have to kind of be careful. You have to ask a lot of questions to find out you know, what you're getting into. And the number one tip is take somebody with you. I'm taking Taylor and Josh. So I think I'll be pretty safe. Anyway, this guitar is a Affinity Fender Strat, 85 bucks, the right price, the right place, the right guitar. It's in the town that I live in. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good option for us. So I worked at a, one of the largest volume uh, guitar retailers in America for five years and I sold a crap ton of guitars. And I bought a lot of guitars too off of people that came in, you know, wanted to trade in or something. And I got a lot of sketchy people, man. You never knew when the, where the guitar came from, you had to ask. And there's some things you can ask people when you're buying a guitar that reveal a lot of things to keep you kind of safe. As far as, you know, getting a stolen guitar or just, you know, the quality of the guitar. Ask them, hey, how long have you had this guitar? Where did you get it from? How much did you pay for it? And, you know, if they answer those questions, it'll reveal some stuff. Too. We had a lot of people, a lot of sketchy people at that shop. Hey, man. Nathan? Nathan Good to meet you, man. So that's a guitar? Cool. So the first thing I would look for when I'm, you know, looking at a used guitar, a new guitar for that matter, is just check the tuning keys, make sure that there's no gaps or blips in them. If there's a problem with those, you're gonna have to replace them. And it's gonna be tough to find one that matches or you're gonna need to replace the whole set, right? The next thing is the nut. Make sure there's no cracks in the nut and make sure that the edges aren't broken off. That happens on less expensive guitars where the materials are less expensive too. So just check that out and make sure it's you know in good working order. The next thing I would check for is just the electronics. Just make sure they all work. Go through the pickups. Go through the volume control. Really out of tune, but that's all right. Tone control. That one's good. That one's good. Uh, this jack is loose, but that's pretty common on guitars. You can fix that as long as there's not a short in it, as long as it's not crackling, right? That's what you want to look for. Other than that, just check it over structurally. On some guitars, the headstock may, have, you know, the guitar may have fallen and it may, headstock may have a crack in it or something like that. Check the pocket right here for cracks on bolt-on guitars. And just give it a really good once over. If the neck is bowed a little bit, that's okay, you can fix that, but you wanna check it a little bit to make sure it's kind of even on each side, that it's not twisted on strats. It's not really a problem usually on Gibson's other set neck guitars that might be an issue. So I think this guitar will do the job. I think we'll go ahead and grab it. So there are just a few tools that you're gonna to need to make all of the adjustments we're gonna to do to this guitar. And hopefully most people will have these just laying around their house so you don't have to go out and spend any money. You're gonna need a polish cloth and some polish, some screwdrivers, a socket, some Allen wrenches, some new strings, a string winder and a clipper, fingernail file and some masking tape, and then just a tuner too. All right, the first thing when you get a new used guitar, even if it's cheap, you know, take pride in it. It's your guitar, it's your baby. Clean it up. And to do that, I just have some, like a basic guitar polish and a polish cloth. That's where you start. And if you don't have guitar polish or a polish cloth like this, just use a t-shirt and, you know, just breathe on the guitar. That will get most things off. But this guitar is a little bit dirty, which is fine. There's, you know, dust and stuff under there. And I'll be giving you some more tips as soon as we get the strings off to clean it as you go. But like, this is the first thing. This is step one. Just get all the junk off of it, right? And you'll be good to go. Another thing that I have that I'll show you later is just some steel wool to clean the fretboard and some fretboard conditioner too, if you want, but you don't have to have that. Number two is to tighten things up. So a lot of times with used guitars, there's gonna be a few places where things will be a little bit loose. One of those is on the output jack, and this is especially the case for strats. Uh, also your volume and tone knobs here, and then also up here on the tuning pegs. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten all those up. Make sure that you don't over tighten these because then they can be really hard to turn. Number three, adjust your neck. And this guitar, when we bought it, it's a special situation. 
I say special, but it's a really common situation when you buy a used guitar. Strats come set up with nine gauge strings. This guitar has tens on it. I can tell because the neck's bowed a little bit and it's tough to play. So what we're gonna do is adjust the neck with tens on it, make it play right so you can see how that works. And then when we change the strings in the next little point, we're gonna put nines on it so it goes back the way it should be originally. Andrew and I check neck relief the same way, so I'm gonna let him show you how to do this and uh, just make a small adjustment. Don't be afraid to do it as long as you do little incremental steps when you do it. That's right, that's the important thing. So quickly to check here, we're just gonna fret on the first fret and the very last fret. And then all we do is we just touch there to see how much distance there is between the end of the eighth fret and the string there. And we can see that there's a decent amount of space, probably mm -hmm. more space than we want. We usually want a little bit of movement, but this is too much. I like minimal movement, just where it pings, just barely moves. Exactly. And it's gonna depend on your guitar, uh, right. how low you can get that. All right. Okay, so that's a little bit better, almost to where I would like it if I was playing this guitar with tens on it. I'm gonna put the neck back to where it was so we can change its strings, put some nines on there. And that is step number four. Put new strings on your guitar, fresh strings. You don't know where this guitar has been. You don't know what it's been through. You don't even know what gauge strings are on it. These might be tens, they may be something, might be something else. So mm -hmm. if you need help changing your strings, we're gonna put a link in the description below this video where you can go and watch a video that's pretty exhaustive on how to change your strings on your electric guitar or acoustic guitar. So all you're gonna need to do this is a set of strings and a set of clippers slash string winder. All right, let's get into it. Cool. All right, we've got the strings off and there are a couple things you wanna make sure you do while you have the opportunity. The first one is to clean the rest of the guitar that was hidden by the strings, right? You can do the body of the guitar. You can even use some zero, 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 zero grit steel wool to clean the fretboard. That works really well. And I have some cold pressed linseed oil that I used to condition my fretboard maybe once a year just to keep it from drying out. That's a really important thing to do every once in a while. Right. Cool. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take this opportunity to lube the nut of the guitar here. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one of the more popular ways is to use something like this, which they call nut sauce, um, and you can just fire it in there. What happens is the strings can sometimes bind yeah. in there, and obviously that's gonna cause tuning issues. Another thing that you can do though, if, uh, if you have it kicking around, is pencil lead. Um, so mechanical pencils work really well. You can get in there and just make sure you get a little bit in each one, kind of clean it off, make sure the lead's in there, uh, and you should be good to go. All right, tip number five to make your cheap guitar play great. I want it to kind of stick here in the middle while we're doing the string change, and that is if you have any frets that are poking out, like the cheese grater, that's really uncomfortable to play. That's my least favorite thing about cheap guitars or used guitars, sometimes. no doubt. So what you can do, a lot of people don't know this, is make sure you tape off the, the fret that's giving you trouble. And then you can just use a regular fingernail file to file that fret off. The reason you use the tape is to make sure you don't scratch the finish on your guitar, so I'll show you what that looks like really quick. What are these little like? Uh, that is epoxy from the factory. Oh man! Whoa! Yep. It's like cover it. I should cover those two, but whatever. So this is just cold pressed linseed oil, and I've had this bottle for 10, 12 years, and it just lasts forever. And all you're doing is putting some moisture back into your fretboard so it doesn't crack on you. I have one guitar that has a cracked fretboard. Yeah. It's fine now, but you know if I'd have been more diligent about this, it wouldn't have happened. And again, this is only once. Maybe once every year I do this. It's gonna depend on where you live, right? Exactly. Good All right, so now we're gonna put some nines back on this thing because that's what the guitar was originally set up for. Okay, so we got the nines on there, but we did notice that the neck is gonna need a little bit of an adjustment, so we're gonna do that right now. 
And when you adjust, make little adjustments like this, just go like a quarter of a turn at a time and then check it. If it starts buzzing on the first five frets, anywhere around that area, you've probably gone too far and you want to back it off a little bit until you get rid of that buzzing. But you're just looking to straighten the neck out just a little bit to where it's just the slightest amount of bow in it this way. And you can look down the neck or you can do the little method where you hold fret the first fret and maybe where the fret touches the body and see if there's any space between the frets and the strings as you do that. And one thing I'll mention is this one was pretty loose, yeah. which means like most of the time a truss rod should feel tight. Yeah. So I know that's why I'm doing a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, it felt completely loose. It did. Okay, so we got it looking pretty good. None of the strings are buzzing at the first fret except for one. So that kind of leads us to our next point. Yeah. Which is string height on your bridges, the saddles of your bridge. And for the most part, most necks have a radius to them, like you know, it's a small curve. Some of them are pretty flat, but this one, what is it, nine and a half inches or something like that? Something like that, On yeah. the strat. And the saddles kind of go into that nice soft curve. But if you look at the string that's buzzing, this one, the D string, it's a little bit out of whack. So you're yes. gonna wanna just make sure that there's a nice curve to them if you have like a nine and a half inch radius on your fretboard. And if they're not, just make a little adjustment here. Or if you got your neck pretty flat, but you still want your action a little bit lower, you could try and lower these a little bit. But let's go ahead and just take a look at this adjustment. So this D string saddle is a little bit low, and you can see it's kind of angled to one side. So all I'm gonna do is bring this side up that's crooked or lower up a little bit to where it's even with the other side. And this should be a little bit higher than the A string, so it's got that nice curve to it, and that should fix the buzzing of the first fret. All right, so number seven, we're gonna take a look at the pickup heights. Now, quite often you're gonna see, especially with Stratocasters, um, these pickups angled like this. So a little bit lower on the bass side, a little bit higher on the treble side, and that is perfectly normal. The reason for that is there's more output coming from these yep. than there is from these, so we do that to compensate. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna kind of experiment with the heights. Hmm. Higher it is, the more output you're gonna have, the lower it is, the less you're gonna have. Uh, usually it is gonna just sound different in general. Um, one other thing is that you're going to usually want your bridge pickup to be a little bit higher, mm -hmm. the one in the middle to be kind of in the middle, and then the one at the neck here to be the lowest of all of them, mm -hmm. again, because there's more vibration distance on the strings here, so it's going to end up being louder. But again, it's something you just want to experiment with uh, and use your ears to kind of decide what's going to sound best. And on this guitar, you can see this one maybe is a little bit low, so if you want to adjust it, we'll just fire a screwdriver in there, and depending on the type of pickup, you might have to go left or right, but going right here raises it. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's fine. All right, the last little tip to make your cheap or use electric guitar play great is to set the intonation up so your guitar sounds as good as possible. And you may be thinking, that's complicated. I don't know how to do it, but I have a mm. quick way for you to remember this. And it's an easy way to implement it. And it's this saying right here. Just remember, FFF. If the fretted note is flat, move the saddle forward. And I'll show you what that means. Uh, we turn that tune on there, Andy. If I have this G string, and we checked this earlier, saw no, it's in tune, and then just hit it open, see if it's in tune, get it perfect, and then fret the 12th fret. If it's flat, if that note on the 12th fret is flat, you need to move the saddle forward that way. So I'm gonna do that, and that's how you set intonation on the guitar. Just little adjustments at a time. Hit that again. All right, so I just made that little adjustment, get it back in tune to a G, Check the 12th fret, and it's a G too. So that's the way you set your intonation so the guitar plays as in tune as possible all the way up the neck. All right, we are ready to compare these two guitars. I'm just plugged in straight into a PV Classic 30, neutral settings, really flat. I'm gonna go neck pickup, I'm gonna play one riff, switch guitars, and then play the exact same thing or as close to it as I can get. <laughs> The guitars are feeling pretty similar to me. I mean, they sound great. I both think this is a $1,300 guitar. Paid $85 for that one. It feels really good. That one is brighter, mm -hmm. but you can always, you know, adjust your amp or your controls on your guitar to kind of compensate for that to get a little bit mellow over tone. If you want, if you like a spanky tone, that's great. That's it for this video. Make sure to leave a comment below, letting us know what you thought of the sound of each of these two guitars, and if you think it's worth investing the time getting, you know, a cheap guitar to play better, or if you should just, you know, go out and buy a nice standard American Strat off the bat. 
And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys later.